Right, in this video, I want to show you how to translate from a recursive rule, recursive rule that's given to us. Remember, recursive rule meaning the relationship between a term and its previous term. All right, whether it's by a common difference or a common ratio, term to its previous term. I want to translate that from a recursive rule to an explicit rule, which is what we did in the previous section. All right, now uh, we're going to see, given we have the first term, all right, and the recursive rule, can we translate that to an explicit rule? Well, here are the steps. It says rewrite the explicit rule for arithmetic or geometric sequences, um, whichever applies. Now, if you just notice, by the way it is set up, since I have, uh, I, in a, this is technically an addition problem, right? Um, I'm adding a negative number, all right? We're talking about an arithmetic sequence here. And so I'm going to write down um, what the explicit rule for a, an arithmetic sequence is. In this case, if you remember, it is a of n is equal to a1 plus, and then in parentheses, n minus 1 times d. All right, hopefully that comes, that comes a little quicker to you since we've done some of these problems. Now step two says, answer one or the other, whichever applies. Uh, letter A says, is there a number being added or subtracted to a of n minus 1? In this case, yes. Uh, there is a number negative 2 there. Well, if your answer is yes, and it is in this case for 2a, we get a common difference of whatever that value is. In this case, it's negative 2. All right? uh, and so we've, we've answered step 2a. We can jump down to step two, uh, sorry, uh, step 3, which has replaced the a1 term uh, with the value given and D or R with the value that you identified in step two. All right, so I'm referring to this one now. I am trying to convert it and, and fill in all the information. A1 was given to us as negative five. That's what A1 is being replaced with. And then in parentheses plus N minus one times the common difference in this case was negative two. All right, step four says to simplify, which means I'm going to distribute that negative two to the N minus one or multiply negative 2 times n and then negative 2 times negative 1, right? So we get negative 5, and then negative 2 times n is negative 2n, and then negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, all right? Now, in order for me to simplify, again, I want to put the term with the letter n in front, and then I simplify by combining like terms. I get negative 5 plus 2, which gets me negative 3, and that's how you convert an, a recursive rule to an explicit rule. All right, that covers letter A. Let's do problem letter B. We're given A1, our first term is equal to 10, and then the recursive rule A of n is equal to two times A of n minus one. So for any term, um, for any term in a, in a sequence, we get the previous term uh, in connection with multiplying it times two. All right, that's what that's saying. Now we're gonna rewrite the explicit rule uh, in this case, since we have multiplication going on, this is an example of a geometric sequence. So I'm going to write the explicit rule for a geometric sequence. All right. So the equation that we have here is going to be a of n is equal to the first term, a1, times r, the common ratio, whatever that is, raised to the n minus 1. All right, now since we've already noted that it's a geometric sequence, we're actually going to answer uh, question 2b, which says... Um, is there a number or fraction being multiplied to the a of n minus 1? Yes, that value, that number 2. That is your common ratio. So I say yes, and instead of d, I'm going to put in r equals the number in front, and which is 2. All right, step 3 now says I'm going to replace the a1 term, which was given to us as the number 10, here. So I'm going to rewrite this explicit rule a of n is equal to, well, a1 is 10, and then in parentheses, I'm going to write the r value, which was 2, and that's going to be raised to the n minus 1, all right? Uh, and so step 4 says to simplify, well, there's actually nothing I can do to simplify this, all right? Here's why. I cannot multiply 10 times 2 and get 20, the reason being because 2 is being raised to a certain power. The 10 is not being raised to that same power. That's why I cannot combine them, and that's why... That's all you need to write. So this is the final answer. Um, I'm just drawing an arrow to point out that that's as simplified as it's going to get, and that's how you do this problem.